Every great player has to start somewhere, so let's get you guys going with what you're going to need and then you guys can take it from there. My name's Perp, I'm a 5 time tournament winner and this is your quick start guide to dominating everyone in Season of Mastery. We're going to kick it off with race choice. No, 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 not this, no, 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 not this. The most important thing in Rogue PvP is setting up windows of opportunity, which means consistency and uptime are great. We naturally have a lot of gameplay options to avoid damage, so we maximise that through race choice. Your number one counter to this in dueling and well PvP in order is number one, stuns, two, fears, and three, immobilising effects. In Battlegrounds it's swapped completely, so immobilising effects will be your number one counter, then fears, and finally stuns. So you guessed it, if you like jewels and wild PvP, we're going to go Orc because we can't trinket stuns. This is because of course of the racial hardiness, which also blocks wreck bombs, enemy rogues, and tidal charm or grenade combinations. Plus you never know when someone's going to jump you with the dark high and pulverizer. In BGs we gain our advantage through being undead or gnome. The bonus here of course is undead can also get out of magic dusts. Undead is also very consistent with the guaranteed fear break because sometimes your Orc racial just doesn't work. You don't have to keep your PvP trinket to break fear, so you can carry something else, such as a net, a tidal charm, or maybe an AGM. So Gnomon Alliance is the best because uptime is the most important thing, like we said earlier. Escape Artist also saves your healer a dispel so it can be used on more important targets like your warrior, and there's lots of RNG bullshit in the game that you can avoid, and escape with this. Don't forget on top of that, Escape Artist also allows you to save consumables and improve sprint, which you have two of in the battleground. And to the people who would much rather roll Dwarf or Human, I can't see why I wouldn't want that. Remember that we don't want to worry about stuns in Battlegrounds, because if the enemy team has rogues on defense, they're going to lose. So guys, faction choice is about team play. Horde is very risky, and Alliance is about consistency. Alliance wins through attrition, and Horde wins through coordinated windows of burst. If you can't line up your windows of burst as Horde, you simply fall to an average Alliance team. Therefore, this means that Alliance is technically the better faction for PvP overall. Their racials are a lot more consistent than the Horde racials are, so that gives them the upper edge. For leveling, well, there's no real secret to it. You pick up the free add-on called Guideline, and you get to 60 within a few days of the speedrunners. You run a standard combat build with a focus on rushing improved sprint and endurance. The strategy is simple. You run to mobs, you press Sinister Strike, you build 4 combo points, and you hit Eviscerate. You need improved sprint because slows and immobilizers will kill you in the open world. Things like Frost Shock, Frost Novas, etc. Simple. You PvP roughly the same way as killing mobs. You spam Sinister Strike and Eviscerate with your improved sprint giving yourself uptime. And make sure you focus on getting a new main hand every 5 levels if you can. Whether this is through quests or mainly dungeons, I personally prefer the dungeons or the auction house. Make sure your main hand is slow, above 2.4 to 2.5 speed if you can help it. You can choose to level mining and engineering at the same time when you level, but I personally prefer to get my level 40 mount before I start to look for nodes for mining. Grenades will help you in low level PvP, but as I'll talk about later with professions, they're not mega important. Dipping into the professions, we want to start with engineering. You pick up Gnomish Engineering first, you create your Death Ray and your Battle Chicken, and then you swap to Goblin so you can create your own Sapper Charges and Rocket Boots. You then want to pick up blacksmithing and get it to 225 for the fear immunity trinket. You have to keep BS for the trinket use, remember that. And moving on to the age old question now of hemorrhage versus backstab, and of course your talents. Hemo is much more about consistency through hitting your target in a stun lock. Your damage increases over time from your auto attacks, poison procs, and cheap spammable ability in hemorrhage, and your kill pressure comes from having cold blood to use on an eviscerate. But of course, a lot of you guys know that I believe backstab is better. Why is it better, Perp? Well, pretty simple. Good players will not let you lock them down for very long without investing your entire toolkit into them, and you do not want to be a 10 minute rogue. Whereas Backstab's damage revolves around bursts from the ability itself with its high crit modifier. You stick to your target with improved sprint and endurance, which gives you a reduced cooldown on improved sprint, and you overwhelm your opponents with flat damage from ambush and backstab. Hemo, as you can see here, is a very standardized build, as you need to be running cold blood, dirge deeds, and prep to guarantee yourself kills. So your spec will look like this. Very niche variations are posted in my Discord, so if you want to go and grab those, you can do that. An example of this will be taking Improved Kidney when playing with a Pompyro Mage, so you can stun the target and explode them with an extra 9% damage. On the flip side, your standard backstab build will look like this. This is of course 16, 12, 23. You drop damage for utility when you play in Battlegrounds, picking up Endurance here for the CD reduction on Sprint, and you drop more damage for 2 points in Master of Deception if you play versus a good pre-made, because if the Druid finds you when he's picking the flag, I'll kick you from the team myself. So following the same theme, general optimization is quite straightforward. I will do a much more in-depth guide on this down the line since gear swapping is massive in Classic, but since there's so many items to grab, focus on these principles. 
As Hemo, you want to focus on stacking attack power, and aim for a slow main hand, over 2.5 speed if you can, and a fast offhand for poison procs. The reason you do this is because hemorrhage does more damage with a slower main hand. You also want to grab yourself a nice dagger in the back pocket to swap to when you ambush cloth targets. As backstab, you want to focus on stacking agility and crit percentage. You want to aim for a slow dagger in your main hand, because of course backstab also now does more damage based on the speed of your main hand. We're talking over 1.7 speed if you can help it, and a fast dagger in your offhand, again, for poison procs. You do not swap to anything to do Sinister Strike, and you keep your dagger on. In Battlegrounds, you want a gear set that stacks stamina for survivability, and a gear set that stacks flat crit percentage. The reason you do this is because you want stamina when you're trying to survive, peel for, or pick the flag, and you want a gear set that stacks crit percentage to swap to when you're going for flag carriers. As we spoke about previously, PvP is about windows of opportunity, so you want to get the maximum amount of crit when you have your 5 seconds hitting the flag carrier. So with Keybinds, there's a few rules that you must abide to when you're doing them. Reactive abilities must be off of modifiers. This means things like Blind, Vanish, Gouge, Kidney, Grenade, Trinket, and Kick. And by the same token, they should be near WASD. Your index finger is your strongest and most manipulatable finger, so you should control Vanish and Kick with that finger, your fastest abilities. If you need an example, I have Blind on Q, I have Vanish on R, my Gouge is on 5, my Kidney is on 4, my Grenade is on E, my PvP Trinket is X, and my Kick is F. You do not, under any circumstances, put keybinds on shift, control, or alt modifiers of WASD. The reason for this is you never want to be in a battle where you accidentally move and then you hit a keybind that's important. We're going to talk about gear set swapping in another video, but for now you want to keep your gear set swaps to your middle mouse button so you can hit vanish and cue a gear swap with two hands. So I have no script for this section of course because we're just going to quickly go through the macros right here. Um, you can skip through these things and go straight to my Discord if you want to grab everything that you see right here, but if you want some explanation on what certain things do, for example things like the slow full cancel macro, you can listen on for the next couple of minutes. So, without further ado, let's get into it. This is your basic shift modifier macro, you press 4 it will use kidney shot, you press shift 4 it will use sapper charge, I have a lot of these, I'm not going to go through these kinds of things again. Preparation, what this does, it will use a stop casting, so sometimes if you're using a mount or using a grenade or something like that and you need to like prep vanish a coil, this is just a safe way to hit your preparation key so it will interrupt your grenade cast. What this macro will do here is of course it will use kick on my main target and if I press shift, like with my kidney shot right here, it will equip my blood fang hood. Now, of course I don't have a blood fang hood because it's the beta, but this was my macro for swapping my helmets. You do want keybinds and macros for swapping your helmets after you use things like goblin rocket helmet and things like that. This is my grenade macro, what this will do is when you press the grenade key once, it will cast the grenade, when you press the grenade key again, it will interrupt the cast. Very important, you want to be able to fake your grenades. Shift modifier macro for sprint and slice and dice. Now this, this macro is pretty interesting. What this macro will do right here is while it will not use a dark rune, what it will do is when I hit my shift key, if you look at my Skull of Impending Doom right here, it will come up with a dark rune tooltip. So if I press shift, I can see how many dark runes I have. So if I want to dark rune a sheep or a sap or something like that, or a blind, I can do that by pressing shift just to make sure I've got enough dark runes to do that. This keybind right, sorry, this macro right here is pretty interesting. What this macro will do is it will show the tooltip of whatever boots I have equipped. If I press the keybind, it will open my map. If I press it again, it will close my map. If I press control in the keybind, it will use whatever boots I have equipped. So for example, if I use goblin rocket boots, it will of course run the goblin rocket boots. This is just a tooltip macro for eviscerate. Um, another, what do you want to call them? Modifier macro, sorry. Lost my train of thought right there. This is a sap macro. So what this will do is when I hit my vanish key, it's also a safe sap as well. So you want to have your vanish and your sap on the same keybind. So I have my vanish on R, and if I go into stealth, I also have my sap on R. It's just showing the tooltip of vanish. Really helpful right there. This macro right here I don't actually use, so that's a waste of time. This macro right here will use Gouge if I am in Stance 0, which is outside of Stealth, and then it will use Sap if I'm in Stance 1, which is inside Stealth. It will also dismount me, stop me casting from, from grenades, and take my weapons out. So it actually looks like this. You've already seen this many times before if you've seen any of my videos. This is my Dark Rune and Blind macro. This macro right here will cancel your Noggin Fogger slow fall. So, we've all been in the situation when we're on enemy roof and the druid jumps down and we end up falling off the roof and then we end up miles away from the druid because, or the flag carrier or whatever, because we have a slow fall on. And if we have a million buffs because, you know, we might have consumables and other things equipped and everything else, blah blah blah, yada yada yada, it's going to be pretty hard for our mouse to kind of track where the slow fall is. So what this macro will do is cancel that slow fall. Really clean, really easy. 
This is a stop casting flashbomb macro. So again, if you're using a nade and you want to cancel that grenade, you can just e easily press this without pressing the nade keybind once. This is a weapon swap macro. Now, the reason you put run play sound one, two, one, three in is because in the classic client, when you swap your weapon, no sound actually plays. So what I've done is I've spent like two hours digging up what this sound is, a long fucking time, let me tell you. So when I press this, so when I press this, you guys can hear, there's a little clicking noise, very helpful. This macro right here simply is a very straightforward macro. All this macro will do is use magic dust. Now you might think, what's the point in having this? Well, this icon right here is the picture of magic dust, not the tooltip. So if you don't have any magic dust on you, instead of showing like a, a much darkened version of the tooltip with a little zero, it will show the normal picture of the thing. So your UI just looks a lot sexier. You'll notice that this, this is a common theme with the rest of my UI. I don't have restoration potions. I don't have uh, elixir of poison resistances. I don't have anti-venoms or swiftness potions, but the theme is still the same. So again, you can download this macro from my Discord for free if you want to. It's another weapon swap macro. These again, another are of the potion macros where they have the picture of the item. This is a stopwatch macro that I don't use. We don't have to worry about that. This right here is going to be really important for phase one. This is a disarm macro. So a disarm macro is super important because, or an anti-disarm macro, sorry, because we do not have access to Bloodfang gloves. So when you see a warrior go into defensive stance or you see someone casting Lincoln's Boomerang, you want to hit this key right here. Equip slot 17 will equip your offhand and equip slot 16 will equip something into your main hand. This is a T macro, stop casting as well, just in case you're in the middle of a nade and need to do something. These are all like stop casting and picture macros. This right here will use your, uh, your anti-venoms. So, if you press this once, it will use the first anti-venom. If you press it again, after that it will use your strong anti-venom, and after that it will use your powerful anti-venom. This right here is my attack macro. So what this will do is when I'm outside of stealth, it will use backstab. It will start my attack, again when I'm outside of stealth, so this is protection from accidentally taking myself out of stealth, and it will stop my casting if I need to do that if I'm in the middle of a nade or something. This is a dual macro, this is a forfeit macro, you don't need this if you don't want them. This right here, it was a it used to be a raid macro where I just cancel things so I don't buff cap myself, don't have to worry about that. This macro right here will hide the stopwatch frame and also get rid of your PvP flag. So if you if my PvP flag right here, if I press the macro, the flag is now gone. Very sexy. This macro right here will increase the size of your buffs to something a little bit nicer on your eyes. This macro is a main hand swap macro. Um, this is my ambush macro. So again, start attack, no stealth, etc, etc. Very straightforward. Uh, this is an important, this is from TBC. This macro right here cancels your goblin rocket boots. So what happens is you do not want your rocket boots to break. So if this right here is the enemy flag carrier, if I'm running towards him and I connect on him and I'm stunning him right here, I don't need my boots on. As you can see, they've literally broke. So we press the macro and we turn them off and we don't need them. So we save our boots. Once we have the value, that's it, done. This is a cancel aura for things like bop, for dropping the flag, for cancelling your skull. Cancelling your skull is incredibly fucking important. A lot of people make this make the mistake of believing that they just need to press their weapon swap macro. That's a problem if you get stunned. Any kind of stun that disables your character, you're in that CC and you still have skull on. Again, you do not want to have to move your mouse upwards to find the skull buff and right click it. Do it with a macro. The reason you also have a cancel aura in vulnerability is if you ever have to use your rocket helm, and you want to lip the knockdown when you have the flag, because lip cancels the knockdown of Rocket Helm, you're gonna to need to cancel immediately the invulnerability effect so you can re-pick the flag, because you can't pick the flag up when you're affected by this effect, it will drop it. So you need this. You also need to cancel or a stealth, because if you ever want to connect on target, sometimes it's better to just cancel your stealth. Um, Discombobulator Ray and Healing Potion thing. These right here are what we call gear swap macros. So these, basically revolve around how item rack works. So you'll make a set in item rack. I'll go into this in another video, but you'll make a set in item rack. You'll give it a name. So the name of this uh, item set that is I've called default. And if you type slash item rack equip, it will equip that set. So you do this by, you'll vanish when you're on an enemy flag carrier after using a stamina set, and then you'll press your, whatever your keybind is for swapping your gear set and cue that when you go into vanish. This is an eat macro. I mean, you guys don't have to use this kind of thing, but there's something wrong with my brain, so I like pressing these sort of buttons. This is my character pane macro, so what this will do is it will open my character pane up, it will also toggle my weapons, it will change the nameplate range to 41, which doesn't work in classic, of course, um, and yeah, that's pretty much what that is. 
Uh, let's run through these. So all of these are pretty much the same as, as everything else that we've, we've got. These are all modifier macros, things like that. There's nothing really important here. Everything is pretty much the same. Um, this right here will, of course, equip two freezing bands when you eventually get those, if you want to get those. Um, and we've obviously gone through weapon swap macros. So 17 is your off hand and 16 is your main hand. You want, to have, you want to have swaps for three different poisons and for two different main hands. And then you want to pick up obviously extra weapons like Silent Fang, Dazzling Longsword. We'll go into this later into the video with a nice little spreadsheet. So pretty much here, everything is, is the same from what I can see. Um, there's nothing really important here, apart from what I've shown you. So you can grab all these macros by going into my Discord, so go and do that. So arguably one of the most important parts of the guide is things you want to acquire at level 60. The first things you want to get out of the way are your engineering items. I'm going to link you guys an Excel sheet that you can fill out for yourselves. So yeah, like I said, you basically just want to go through here, check things off the list. Everything is pretty straightforward. You guys know how to get consumables. They're just herbs that you buy from the auction house, etc, etc. Um, if you want to find out how to do a quest for things like Skull of Impending Doom or Nifty Stopwatch, it's a wild head search away. You're all adults, you know how to look after yourselves. Go and do that. I'm not going to milk you for 10 minutes of ad time to show you how to run into older man. That's going to cover this video for today. Quick little no BS rundown. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There will be many more videos to come on things like openers, doing damage, you know, itemization, etc, etc. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we will run through the next stages of your journey.